Hey, I got a confession. Been losing all momentum. I got curious about monkeys and decided to visit the Arashiyama Monkey Park. I drove to Arashiyama and though it was the weekend, I found plenty of parking spots nearby and didn't have any trouble parking. Luckily, it had snowed the day before and it was really cold, so I was worried about the weather. But the day turned out sunny, as you can see, and the weather was perfect for climbing the mountain. The monkey park is located behind the shrine, so you head towards the shrine first and then climb up the stairs and walk there. Here is the entrance. The admission fee is 600 yen for adults, 300 yen for children and free for children under 3 years old. So this time, Tenchan got it for free. <laughs> there are currently about 120 Japanese macaques living in the wild at this monkey park. From the entrance to where the monkeys are, it turns out to be quite a hike, taking about 20 minutes. There are 120 steps to conquer. After that, it becomes a gentle uphill slope. The path is well maintained, so even little kids like Tenchen can climb it. I think it's indeed climbable, but in areas where there is a fence and others where there isn't leading to steep cliffs. It's essential to always hold hands with small children to ensure their safety. Tenchan was really enthusiastic and climbed with all his might for the first time. <laughs> the weather was truly wonderful that day and as far as the eye could see, it turned into a very pleasant forest bathing experience. And you know what surprised me when I came here? Was that the most of people I came across were foreigners. In terms of the ratio of Japanese to foreigners, I would say over 80% were from other countries. It wasn't just English. There were French, probably Korean too, and many other languages. So I think people were really coming from all over the world. You know, I did see some Japanese people, but they were either couples or families with children. That day, I hardly met any elderly Japanese people or middle-aged men or women who is hiking. That really surprised me. Arashiyama is extremely popular among middle-aged or older Japanese people, and you would expect lots of tourists, but it seems like none of them go to the monkey park. Nobody was there to see them. I wondered why and thought about various reasons. One of the reasons why might be that monkeys are widely distributed in Japan's nature and inhabit many areas of the country. So maybe they're too familiar to us. And Japanese macaques are known as the only monkeys in the world that can live in snowy conditions, making them visible across the broad range of Japan. As a result, monkeys are a relatively familiar presence to many Japanese people. Monkeys also frequently appear in Japanese culture and traditions. Consequently, there might be few Japanese who would go out of their way to hike and see monkeys. It's quite interesting, <laughs> isn't it? <laughs> Just before reaching the observation deck, 
there was a playground where children could play. This was truly appreciated. It was a perfect spot for children to take a break, especially when they start to get tired or bored during the hike. In Japan, there is a famous folk tale called Sarukani Gassen, which tells the story of monkeys and crabs fighting. Monkeys are depicted as villains in this tale, but I felt that the perception of monkeys in Japan is quite complex. While monkeys are familiar creatures, they are sometimes disliked as pests that damage crops. On the other hand, they are also revered in culture and tradition. Sometimes treated with the same respect as gods. Monkeys are believed to bring happiness and are considered auspicious symbols during celebrations like New Year's. So, I thought that Japanese people have diverse feelings towards monkeys. While they may play the roles of villains in stories, they are also respected in reality. It might be because of these dual aspects that many people have complex feelings towards monkeys. Not simply thinking of them as cute. Despite loving monkeys, perhaps because they're not considered rare, Japanese people might not visit monkeys' parks often. As we finally reached the summit, I couldn't help but ponder these thoughts. The summit turned out to be such a breathtaking place, which was quite surprising. Being at an elevation of 160 meters on clear days, you can see the entire city of Kyoto. The view was incredible. The monkeys are incredibly cute. But they are still wild animals, so there are various precautions. There were instructions to keep your distance, avoid eye contact, and not squat down in front of them to take photos, among other things. Since you can't get closer for photos, using a smartphone has its limitations. That's why, if you are really going to take photos of the monkeys, I highly recommend bring a DSLR camera with a telephoto lens. With that, since there are monkeys everywhere, you'll have plenty of opportunity to take photos. They are really, really adorable. However, there are some monkeys that can be quite aggressive. And might quickly threaten you. So, a bit of a caution is necessary. At the summit, there's also Wi Fi available and restroom facilities, so you can rest assured. There are systems where humans enter a cage and feed the monkeys from inside. You can buy a bag of apples, peanuts, or bananas for just 50 yen each. The monkeys here are quite accustomed to humans and may reach out their hands through the mesh, asking for more and more. It's probably a good idea to wash your hands after interacting with them.
The monkeys today seems to like bananas more and apples, but they're not eating many peanuts. There was a place to stamp, so she stamped on her ticket. There was a pond at the summit too, and there were quite impressive curves in it. And you can walk a little further from here and go up a little bit more where you can see more monkeys. There were some monkeys at the hut too, cracking open the peanuts they got and eating them in a secluded spot away from people. The little monkeys were adorable. We also played in a park a bit on the way back. I was thinking that it would be troublesome if they became too tired from playing in the park and started asking to be carrying during the descent. But I thought they might become fussy later on if they didn't play at all. So I let them play anyways. I guess other parents had the same idea as there were quite a few children around. He's getting tired and more prone to getting irritable. When going downhill, children can become really tired and are more likely to sleep, so we walked with extra caution. Sure enough, on the way back, my three years old Tenjin started to get a bit cranky and said, I want to hold hand with Su-chan and go down together. It was a bit challenging. But well, somehow the weather was good that day and the trail wasn't too bad. So we managed to keep everyone in good spirits and walk down together without having to carry anyone. There are people celebrating their children turning 13, known as the 13th year visit. It's a celebration of safety reaching 13 and a prayer for becoming a respectable adult during this period of significant physical and mental development. Finally, we all had ice cream and then visited the nearby Music Box Museum. Sue was so interested in the music boxes and was delighted. So I'm thinking of visiting the music box museum nearby next time. Today involved a lot of climbing up and down the mountain, which was tiring, and the two of them argued a lot. But it was nice to see them play together peacefully at the end of the day. <laughs> 